Today's May 19th, 2014. We're at the Atlanta History Center in Atlanta, Georgia. And we're honored to have with us today Miss Iris, Iris Fenson. Miss Fenson was married to a U.S. soldier, and they were married during World War II. And this is going to be a, a unique experience for all of us because we're typically interviewing the veteran. So it's going to be very interesting to talk to Miss Fenson, hear about what it was like in England during World War II, how she met her husband, and just about her, her life in general. So we're looking forward to hearing this, Ms. Fenson. Thank you very much for coming. Uh, today we have with us uh, Ed Wood and Frank Luton, who are also volunteers at the Atlanta History Center. Uh, my name is Joe Bruckner. I'm a volunteer at the History Center. Sue Verhoff, who is the senior archivist at the History Center, and Cheryl and Bruce Schwartz. Uh, Mrs. Schwartz is the daughter of Miss Fenson, and Mr. Schwartz is Miss Fenson's son-in-law. So we're, we're thrilled to have the family here as well. Tell us a little bit about your upbringing, growing up, your family. Yeah, well, we lived in London, and I had one sister who was younger than me, but also married an American. She married a Navy boy. But we were a very, very close family. And uh, there was just the two girls. And uh, my mother was, um, she worked. She didn't want to stay home. And so she could never be there when there was activities, you know, from the school or from the church or whatever. But uh, I w went to a religious school that was bombed during the war. So it's since been redone. It was St. Mary's and I went to St. Mary's school. So we didn't go as long as, as they do here. At 14, I left and went to work for the Royal London. Um, my mother pulled strings and uh, so can you imagine a girl today, 14 years old, going into this huge insurance company. I had to have a map to get around it. <laughs> Honestly, it was, when I think back on it, I, I think I wouldn't let my children do that. And then of course, when the um, war started, when the city was bombed, that was bombed too. And I watched the, uh, the firemen. Our house was up on a hill. So we were from our, um, our uh, you know, the attic, yeah. we could see over. And I watched those firemen come down in the flames. Mm. What was your reaction to that, your emotional feeling? Well, I, I, I don't know. I can't remember. My father was a very stoic man. He was in the First World War and he never got flustered. So we would watch his face and if he was reading his newspaper, it would calm us down. And then, of course, after that, we had the buzz bombs, mm -hmm. which was the worst thing, because you, you couldn't hear them until you could see them. And if, the, uh, if they stopped, if the engine stopped, that meant that's when it falls. Oh. So if you were out, you had to run t towards it away from it yeah. and that was the scariest thing because it wasn't human you know that really yeah. was it was a frightening thing yeah. but during the war like I say my mother wouldn't leave my father and we wouldn't leave our mother so we would stay in the house and then they built 
um, a shelter in our garden. And uh, during a raid, my parents would take us down into the shelter and when we fell asleep, they'd go back in the house. Mm. My mother said, if I'm going to die, I'd rather do it in my bed than in a hole in the ground. Mm. But some of our neighbours, if they'd have been in their house, they would have uh, remained alive because the bomb hit the shelter oh. or vice versa. Oh. Others, if they'd have been in the shelter, you know, when their house was bombed, they yeah. went with it. Yeah. So it was, um, I guess we grew up so quickly. And, and, and as I say, my father was a stoic man and our windows in our kitchen was a huge kitchen. We had a great big table in there and it was like a family room. And my father would sit, we'd get the window would get blown out and then they'd come and put a big cardboard thing in there and then if we were lucky we'd get another window and that would go out so oh. it was um, it was just a but my mother she wanted us to go out we liked to dance we used to go to dances and the blackout you know, you couldn't see a hand in front of you. You had a torch mm. and you had to put it down. And the buses would have the, um, the conductor walk in front of the buses to show them where they were going because, oh. first of all, you know what terrible weather that we have. Yeah. You know, we yeah. had fogs would come in. <laughs> <laughs> it's got to, you know, the bus conductor's got to tell the yeah. bus driver <laughs> where to <laughs> go. Gosh. And we both went to work after we, I lost my job in the uh, city because the uh, city wasn't there anymore. Yeah. I went to work for, um, uh, in, um, in the West End on, um, Regent Street. Mm -hmm. I went to work for a, um, a, a tailoring. We had they made gentlemen's clothes mm -hmm. uh, before the war, and then during the war they they made um, the uniforms, officers' uniforms. Okay. In fact, one of your big I forget what his name was now began with an S. He never paid his bill. <laughs> I sent him things all the time and he never, he probably never saw them, you know, <laughs> it was a big wig, you know, in the whatever. But um, that that's where I was when I met my husband. I worked for that company. Talk about the circumstances under which you met your husband. Well, I met him on his first leave and uh, this girlfriend and I, on a Wednesday, was a girls' night out. Well, my husband didn't realize that when he went into the service, girls where he lived didn't go out alone. So here's these two girls <laughs> on their own. He told me years later that he thought I was a high-class hooker. <laughs> I said, I'm glad you said it was a, I was high class. <laughs> <laughs> so he would smile at me with those teeth <laughs> while you're trying to eat. It's very disturbing, you know. And I would say to my friend, if he asks me to dance, I'm going to say no. <laughs> so all of a sudden he gets up, he walks behind us and she laughed. She said, chance would be a fine thing. <laughs> I wasn't going to ask you anyway. But what he had done, he had gone to the front and they had a host. Oh. And he said, he asked the man, he, he said, if I, wa if I want to ask somebody to dance, what do I do? He said, you just ask her. So he came and stood behind my chair 
So I got up. I didn't know who it was <laughs> until I was on the floor. That's how I met my husband. Smart man. So, uh, but I didn't expect to marry him, did I? That was the last thing. I mean, London was full of the Yanks. And the first time I saw an American, we had uh, in our um, offices on the first floor, we had windows that came right down to the ground. And one afternoon, about just after two, we hear this ruckus, this noise going on. So, of course, we run to the window to see what was happening. And there was about four Yanks, arm in arm, walking down Regent Street, singing at the top of their voice. The pubs let out at two. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, that is, so when I would tell people about this American that I was dating, oh, they didn't. Oh, no. <laughs> Until they met him. <laughs> As the war was ending, we planned to be married. So he didn't want to come home with his crew. Oh. So he finagled. You know, my husband, if he wanted something, he'd find a way to do it. <laughs> and he um, finagled and went to work for the Navy. Oh. A, a father, a father a Commander Melson, he was... Um, his office was on, on Regent Street, and he, my husband, was going around and bringing the sailors back to Exeter, okay. you know, for them to come, to come back. This is after the war was over. As it was c coming down, just coming before we Winding down, married. okay. And uh, as I say, he, that's why this. Uh, jacket is not his original jacket. When he left, they took it away from him. Somebody, some smart Alec, you know. Well, you know, my husband was a very handsome man, and it's not easy, I think, for handsome men. They they sort of rub people the wrong way a little bit, <laughs> you know. That's why they took his jacket, you know. That uh, that was a little bit of um, power. I guess, that they had. But he was always afraid that if he left, I would get cold feet yeah. and I wouldn't go. And I told him, my father would get me by the scruff of the neck, you made your bed <laughs> and you lie on it. <laughs> and I wanted to tell you, we were married in my church. Really? Which is an Anglican church, because uh, I went to the school. And there was no questions. He didn't have to sign his life yeah. away. You know, it was um, nobody said what, how, who. Yeah. And my husband also was a Jewish man. Okay. So you talk about a double whammy. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> that's why I say if we could stay married 68 years, anybody <laughs> could stay married 68 years. How did your family feel about you marrying somebody from another country? And well, it must have killed my mother, because mm. my sister too married a, a Navy boy oh, okay. from New York, okay. and she left six weeks. That's a story that I'll tell you about okay. too, and uh, because she came on a ship with the brides, you know, yeah, which was uh, and it wasn't a pleasant ship. Really? It wasn't as pleasant. There were lots of women on there with children, you know, and they had a bit of a rough oh, yeah. crossing, you know. It, it wasn't easy. Huh. But um, he gave my mother the money to find a ticket for me to come home. And uh, his boss, Commander Melson, he said, the day you leave, he said, I'll put her on a plane. He said, but some of these women have got two children. They've been waiting because the first ones that came, they built the um, airstrips, you know. Yeah. So they, it was out. They married mostly um, country girls okay. because that's where they were, stationed yeah. maybe for two years, three years. Yeah. So they married the country girls, but... Um, uh, like I say, he gave my mother the money 
my sister had already gone. And I'm sitting in the movies with a girlfriend and up comes on the screen, will Mrs. McGid go to the manager's office? <laughs> well, for the minute, I didn't know who, oh, that's me. Yeah, <laughs> I was Mrs. McGid for nine months. So I go into the manager's office and my mother's on the line. She said, I have a ticket. You're flying out tonight. Good gosh. So I had to go home put a few things in a, in a bag. I had no American money. And I barely said goodbye to my mother. She put me in one, because uh, I was flying out of Presswick in Scotland, mm -hmm. and there was a little girl there crying. And so she said, oh, you don't want to sit next to her, you know, crying. And, um, but we didn't have time. I didn't really have proper to say goodbye to my mother. Mm. Jeez. Can you imagine? Uh, we hated. To, we didn't like going away on vacation, yeah. my sister and I. We were such homebodies. Yeah. But both of us left my mother, which was enough to kill her. Gosh. You know, when you think about it. But um, anyway, um, I get on the plane. At, of course, I had to have a, a passport, which I had, had which we got beforehand. Right because I didn't know when I was going to leave. Yeah. And uh, I get to New York. It was a rough flight and people were throwing up. I have, didn't feel a thing. And I was the girl that couldn't sit on a swing. <laughs> so, so this was the first time you had flown in an airplane? Yes, yes. It got a, a constellation, was it a constellation? Yeah. yeah. We came over Greenland some, mm -hmm. some way and got down to, into New York about six in the morning. So here I come into New York with no, no money. Somebody gave me a quarter. So I, I thought, well, I'll just call my sister. I, I go into the box and I couldn't find, there's no directions for me. You know, I didn't know how to use the yeah. telephone. So I said to myself, well, I'll just do what I was, my mother always told me, if, if, I lost, if I missed the bus to get a taxi at home, because you don't pay the taxi till your destination, mm -hmm. so there would be no excuse that I couldn't, couldn't get home. So I thought, well, that's what I'll have to do. So I get in a taxi. He must have taken me all around the houses, because I don't know anyway. We drive up to their house at um, about six in the morning, something like that. So I have to ask the, um, the driver, would he wait a moment? So I went up and rang the bell and her father-in-law came down and I said, I'm Iris, Joan's sister, would you please pay the tax? <laughs> And my sister didn't know I was coming. Oh, they were still in bed. <laughs> what was his reaction? So that, well, I can't imagine, you know, in what, what he thought. <laughs> and, and of course, um, my sister wasn't welcome with their family, you know, oh. she, because she was English. Oh, really? And they blamed the English like my in-laws did for the war. They oh. blamed, yeah, they blamed us for the war. And um, now these, my in-laws were Jewish people. Yeah. Now why they would blame the English, because yeah. they weren't the ones, were they, that were putting them in the, That's right. in the, uh, in the things. The ovens, yeah. In the things, but uh, as I say, we survived and we had yeah. three children. And um, I always voted, you know, they used to say, uh, if you married an American at one time, you automatically became a citizen. Well, they changed that. Yeah. But they, normally I think it's seven years, but if you married an American, they cut it down to five. Okay. Well, we had to study. We didn't know what they were going to ask us. Yeah. Not like today when 500 people get up and raise their yeah. hand yeah. and it, all kinds of languages, we yeah. didn't know. and. Uh, so we ha had to study the Constitution okay. 
and because we didn't know what he was going to ask us. And my sister, who lived next door to me, they left, um, that's another story, they left uh, New York and came down to uh, Atlanta. So she was oh. my neighbor for 17 oh, okay. years. Huh. And uh, so we studied together. And um, anyway, I passed whatever it was. And so I've always voted. Good, good for I you. Voted, even if I was in a wheelchair. Yeah. One time when, the last time when uh, Bush got in, I was on a walker, I had hurt my leg but I was determined I was going to vote mm -hmm. if they had to push me there. And my husband had said, when we first came here, uh, we didn't have a two-party system. There was only the, um, Democrats. the Democrats. Yeah. And he vowed, until we got a two-party system, that he would vote Republican. Okay. Well, he was sitting next to Jimmy Carter on a plane one time, and you know what they talk about, what can they yeah. see? And he told Jimmy Carter that, <laughs> which he didn't appreciate, <laughs> you know. What, what was Jimmy Carter's reaction to that? Well, I, I, he didn't like it. He <laughs> tried to talk him out of it, and he said, uh, maybe I'll rethink it when we get a two-party system in Georgia, <laughs> which we didn't, did we? But For you a see, long time. the Jews are, um, are, um, what's the word? They always vote uh, democratic. Democratic, yeah. Because they, um, they feel that, that they, which I can't understand personally, because the Jews, nobody ever gave them anything. They had to work for everything yeah. that they got. Yeah. You know, like when they came to this country, Nobody handed them anything. Right. They couldn't even find a job because yeah. nobody would hire them. Yeah. And when I first went to, to Miami, three months I was there but before my husband came with my in-laws, oh. which was, was something, you know, they, they yeah. were, were cordial to me, you know. They, I was a pretty girl, so that was one thing that was in my favor. Yeah. But... Um, and where were you then? Where, what city were in you? Miami. Miami. My husband okay. was from Miami. Okay. So you moved from New York to Miami? Yeah, I was only in New York for a few days. Yeah. Oh, okay. And they had to loan me the money to get to Miami. And I went on the train, and the train took 18 hours. It must have stopped everywhere. <laughs> it took the same amount of hours that the plane did to bring me to the country, you know. Oh, so, and I would ask uh, the porter on the train, couldn't understand a word he said. <laughs> I said, could he tell me where the bathrooms were? Well, he didn't understand me, what I was saying. So I sat in my seat for 18 hours <laughs> and didn't go to the car. <laughs> <laughs> That was a long trip. It was, yeah, it was. <laughs> but like I say, um, and then of course, when it came to our religion, everybody thought, well, this would be the thing that would break us up, yeah. you know, our difference yeah. in religion, because, but it didn't. Good. So my husband was the last of the three, of the three children. So maybe he didn't get the brainwashing that yeah. the others, or whatever, yeah. whatever it was. So it never affected him, you know. It's, yeah. And so we worked it out that the mother is the one that raises the children. Okay. And you know, with the Jews, if they don't have a Jewish mother, how do they know who the father is? Now today they do, yeah. but back then, they only had my word for it, didn't they? Uh, yeah. See, okay. they only had the woman, so they really weren't considered Jews if they didn't have a Jewish mother. Oh, uh, okay. But they took me to the rabbi before my husband even came home and looked down his nose, you know, <laughs> and he's asking me all these questions, and, and now I'm a religious girl. Yeah. 
And uh, one of the questions he asked me, uh, if I wanted to become a Jew, that I would have to denounce the fact that Christ was the Son of God. I said, well, I can't do it. Mm. How can I do that when yeah. all my life, yeah. you know, was one thing. You wouldn't be worth anybody, would you? Yeah. If you can't yeah. stay by your, what kind of a person would you be? Yeah. You know, you right. just go where the wind blows and, yeah. and, uh, and I'm easy to get along with. You can push me. My, hus my son-in-law can tell you, but I can also put my foot down. Yeah. You know, they used to say that to my Good. mother. Mm. Do you ever lose your temper? She'd say, if I ever did, you'd know. <laughs> you'd know it. But we're not confrontational people right. anyway, not by nature. Yeah. You know, yeah. we would teach, we would talk good manners and may I please and thank you. And they thought that my manners were I was standoffish. You know, the please and thank yous they didn't like. Yeah. But I wouldn't go to their refrigerator, you know, without saying, may I have wh right. whatever. I mean, yeah. My sister wouldn't do it, yeah. come into my house, and yeah. I wouldn't do it, go into hers yeah. to open their refrigerator. So that's telling you what peculiar people, you know, that we ha we are, but uh, another thing, I also share a birthday with Prince William. He was born on the 21st of June, huh. and uh, not his age, but um, <laughs> his birthday. <laughs> well, you've got to be proud of that. Oh, I, I am, yeah. So, <laughs> so they're giving me a birthday party for my 90th birthday, Good. which will be next month. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. So, um, of course, my husband won't be there, not, but yeah. wherever he is, he, I'm sure he'll, he's waiting for me anyway. He'll be there in spirit. Yeah, he will. Um, I want to ask you some questions back when, yeah, you were yeah. about, back when you were in England. I know your husband flew B-17s, mm -hmm. and I'm assuming while you were dating, he was going yes, he was. off on missions. Talk yeah. about what your feeling was but when I he was would go. But I was never afraid. It's, I'll tell you, I was a ditzy blonde. Mm. I was. Mm. You know, I didn't have a brain in my head. If I had, I would never have married him in the first <laughs> place. So it, it never, it, and same with him now. On his dog tag, he had the H for Hebrew. Mm. Now, if he'd have been shot down, yeah. that would have done him in. But he never thought about it. Huh. We've had other f friends that were Jewish wouldn't fly with their boat with yeah. their dog tag. But see, that's interesting that did. they had that on his dog tag. That's right. Huh. Give us a little perspective on the dates of when, like, when you met and when you got yeah. married. Okay. Well, we met in January of '45. We became engaged in the um, April, and we married in June. Okay, of forty-five. Okay, in, of forty-five. Okay. Yeah. So, this might be a good time for you to show us the, your wedding picture that you have there. We like. We need to get that. Yeah. On film. See, this was just outside the church. Can you hold it up? Can you get it? Just a little, a little bit. Yeah, that's a good-looking couple. Yeah, it's a nice picture. Second-hand rows. I had everybody else's clothes on because <laughs> we couldn't buy things. Yeah. Uh, I had the dress was my friend's, the one that was with yeah. me, and her husband was on a Lancaster, and it was blown out of the sky. Oh, they never found it. They'd been married seven years. They had no children. Okay. So this was her dress. So it was. I was a little taller than her. And when I look at the full-length pictures, yeah. you can see my shoes, which you're not supposed to see. <laughs> so I had the headdress we made ourselves out of flowers, and the veil was my cousin's, and my shoes were somebody else's. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't talk about second-hand 
Well, it sort of made it more special, didn't it? Well, and I thought I was a cat's whisk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. And then I, I became a fashion plate, you know. <laughs> but we were always well-dressed. Yeah. Somehow or other, you know, we would borrow from people. And, and I had a coat that the um, lining was in shreds. And I remember going, maybe before I met my husband, going to the theatre to see um, Private Lives with, uh, oh, I forget, big actor. Yeah. And they said, did you want to take your coat off? I said, no, I do feel the cold, you know. <laughs> and they could I'll take your coat off if the lining was full of <laughs> 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 Um, oh, what was his name? Harrison. Rex Harrison. Rex Harrison. Oh, Rex Harrison. Yeah, really? Rex Harrison, wow. yeah, was in that. With, with the girl he married, and she was a Jewish girl oh, too. Wow. Very, very pretty. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Well, did you, when you were in England, going back to the, the Jewish issue, did yeah. you see much discrimination against Jewish people in England at all? No. Or, yeah. We worked in, in our office. Yeah. There were several Jewish girls yeah. that were there, and um, there, one of them, whose husband, you know, I think he was de he was um, um, in the he was away. He was in the war. He was gone. He was in South Africa, I think. Okay. He was with um, what was his name? The general that Montgomery. Pat Montgomery. Montgomery. The yeah. British oh, the yeah. British general. Oh, yeah. oh British general. Oh, okay. he, he was a, a snotty nosed, as they called him. You know, he thought yeah. he was so grand. <laughs> <laughs> of course, it was it was um, Churchill. If it hadn't been for Churchill, that kept us together. Huh. Yeah. Because Hitler could have walked in, he could have come in on a rowboat. Yeah. I mean, we had nowhere to run. And they were already in Ireland. The the uh, that was where uh, Lord Hawthorne. Haw that was it. He was he was just, so. But um, Hitler, he liked the English. He admired the English, and he wanted to be invited in. Oh, okay. You know. Yeah. Because, like I say, he would, <laughs> he could have come without any problem at all. Yeah. But uh, also, my husband uh, flew after he'd brought the sailors back. He flew, um, uh, um, what was it, a C-47, is it? C-47, yeah. With nurses on board. He was stationed in France, in uh. Uh, Paris. And um, Patton was bogged down at the Battle of the Bulge. And uh, so they were f flying um, supplies to Patton and bringing the um, wounded oh. back to Paris. And they did that several times. Uh, they did that. And. Um, so because I think he was stationed in Paris and uh, he was stationed in Frankfurt, he was in Frankfurt too for, for a while there. He didn't smoke and he didn't drink, mm. which is unusual. Yeah. Um, because they would get these, at our wedding reception, he brought German wine, mm. bottles of b and B. I I mean, he, <laughs> And of course, we had a reception at home, so I mean, <laughs> family, my aunts and whatever, were, were, were drinking in not, you know, glasses like that, you know, <laughs> and all those, all those things. And then we spent our um, wedding night at the Savoy. Oh. And uh, my sister, who was, who was already married, 
It had been married by the Justice of the Peace, which she hated. She, she thought that wasn't a, a wedding. Yeah. So when we were married, she was able to walk down the aisle with her husband. Wow. She was yeah. already married. And then, and then, so they came with us. And he was the only enlisted man in the place, you know. <laughs> but, um, I mean, we were drinking champagne and, and in, the, in the bathroom, first time I'd seen a shower. You never saw, sh I'd never seen really? a shower. Oh. And with glass, you yeah. know. And s sitting by the toilet was a telephone. So, of course, I had to use the telephone <laughs> to call somebody. I said, you'll never forget where I am. <laughs> How posh it was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't see a telephone by the toilet very no, often. I know. <laughs> I think this would be a good time to show your husband's picture. He looks like a movie star. Yes, he does. Does that get it? He's got quite a smile. He worked on you, didn't it? He did. I, t I just would tell him, if you could have kept your mouth shut, <laughs> I never would have. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to also show the flight jacket. I mean, that's really a... That wasn't his original. I told you they took it away yeah. from him. But, um, this is something special. Because he loved the English. Uh, he thought if it was English, it had to be good. <laughs> His folks didn't think that way, but he did. And he loved my family, my cousins. And uh, so we would go over every year. Well, it was 20 years before I went home the first time because my parents came here. My parents came in 1948. They were going hungry. They were short of food. Oh. And I mean, here was Germany, who lost the war, was getting then lease, you know, you yeah. were taking stuff to them. But the English, really, so um, I had hoped that they would come for a vacation. I never expected them to come because my father you know, he put down roots. He was in the First World War for four years, so once he got home, he never wanted to go anywhere. Yeah. And he was a, a rough rider on a horse. Now, there's a Londoners that do nothing about horses, yeah. but you know, you go into the service, so naturally they put him on a horse. <laughs> and uh, he, he went to Russia. I don't know what, because he, he wow. was delivering, um, papers yeah. and he said you never turn your back on the Russians Is that back right? then yeah. he said you never turn so he got frostbite in Russia and then he went to Constantinople and he got um, uh, what's malaria. malaria did he talk about his war experiences no. at all maybe if we'd have been girls uh, I mean boys but perhaps yeah. huh. but um, no, he, he didn't, uh, and uh, they came, and they liked it. They liked it here. They came to New York. Oh. My sister was there, was in New York. But my father was 57, and he couldn't get a job. He was going to, I was this foreigner at 57 years old. So they were going to go home, and they were going to send a... a See, my mother was a coward like that. She never wanted to face things. And they were going to send me a telegram from the ship. And my sister said, you can't do that. That's not fair. You've got to tell her. So she called me and uh, she said, your father cried. My father cried. You could take his fingernails off and he wouldn't cry. So that, you know, I knew how bad it was. Oh, yeah. And so um, I said, well, Mummy, you know what you have to do. You, uh, I hate for you to go. So anyway, my husband's standing there while I'm talking. So he said, let me give me the phone. 
I gave him the phone and he said, so you don't like New York? Who likes New York? <laughs> he said, you come down here, he said, and if you don't like it, then you can go home. So they turned in their ticket and they came. And uh, so they were here 10 years before my father died. Now when you say here, to, to Atlanta. To Atlanta, yeah. okay. Yeah, they came here. Okay. And then my mother uh, uh, lived with me for 30 years. Okay. And was very happy with me. She, when she died, one of her friends told me that my mother had told her that those years were the happiest of her life. Really? So, like I tell my daughter, I, I missed her terribly, yeah. but I did everything that I could for her, so I had no regrets. I carried her around like she carries me. And I thought of it as a privilege. Now, I don't know if she considers it a privilege. <laughs> I think she probably does, just watching the way y'all interact. Well, she has no choice, does she? <laughs> I mean, I've got daughter-in-laws, but they have mothers. So how, you were in Miami. Yeah. Uh, how did you come from Miami to Atlanta? Well, two and a half years we stayed there, and uh, my father-in-law was, uh, he should have gone back to school. My husband should have gone back to school, but he wouldn't. Because he, he went, he took engineering, he, he wanted to get into the, um, the Air Force, so he took e engineering, you know, which helped him get in the Air Force, but that wasn't what he wanted to do. So he didn't want to go back to school, which they blamed me for, which is probably true, because if it hadn't been for me, he would have gone just to shut him up, you know. So that was another strike against me. <laughs> and um, so anyway, his father was um, re in real estate. He was a real estate broker. He had oh. uh, an office on... Um, Lincoln Road, uh -huh. so, but he sold very expensive properties, you know, yeah. and uh, my husband would do the legwork, but then they didn't want to sign up with the young one, they wanted the you know, older fellow. Anyway, they had property out in Hollywood. They had had property there bef uh, when Malcolm was a little boy, and they h owned two homes there. And uh, now I'm going back yeah. because he was five when, uh, in 29, I think, when the th all his stuff was all paper, yeah. everything, all his... The depression and yeah, the stock market crash. everything yeah. was, was on paper. So they, they had to let one of their tenants in one of the houses go and they took the, uh, the other one and they... Uh, were there till, I guess, I know his, his sister, who's three years older than him, was married there in the hotel. She was 18 at the time, but, um, uh, but it all worked out if you just had patience. Talk a little bit about what Atlanta was when you first oh, moved well, here. When we came up here after two and a half years, he came here to work for his brother-in-law. They were in the printing business. They had headquarters in Nashville, and they opened a branch because they had the uh, a Southern Bell. They did the Southern Bell. Oh. So that was a, yeah. a big thing. So we came up here, and he came to work for his brother-in-law. What year was that? Or around what period did you move up here? After two and a half years, we were down there. Oh, okay. So. Yeah, we were so two and a half. Nineteen forty-eight. Forty-eight, forty-nine, late forties. Something. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Or latter part of forty-seven. I was born in okay. March of forty-nine. Here. So Atlanta was a growing city at that oh, point. Oh, so everybody said, "Don't take shoes. You won't need them where you're going." <laughs> <laughs> and that's not true. No. I mean, there were the haves and the have-nots. You know, there's a lot of money in Atlanta, even back then. Yeah. You know, yeah, but yeah. it was funny, you know, that, that don't take shoes. 
It's funny how little people knew about other parts of the country back then. Well, it's true, but um, when they came uh, on his mother's side, no, his father on his father's side, they came from Lithuania. Oh. And uh, they had money, and uh, so they. I think there must have been two families because when I see the pictures, the four elder ones had graduated from the university. My father-in-law was only six, but they were going to be drafted into the army oh. and uh, the, the Tsar, so they weren't going to have that, yeah. you know. So they, um, they got, and they came, um, first class huh. when they came. So they had to come through Ellis Island, but they didn't ha change their name. Now see, the name Magid uh, Ma is uh, Margid, the Margid. Okay. The Margid was the storyteller. He was the fellow that went from tribe to tribe with oh. the news. Oh. And um, so, When they came, my father-in-law was six, and they went to, um, where did I say they went? They went to Rhode Island. Rhode Island, yeah, or they went to, yeah, they went oh, to oh. Rhode Island. And he had a, um, a glass factory, and he was down in Miami uh, on vacation when it burned. So they went back to settle things and then they came back down to Miami and that's uh, uh, where Malcolm was born. Okay. The um, two, two older boys, he had, a, uh, no, the old boy and a girl were seven years older than Malcolm, Mitchell. And uh, Mitchell went up to the university uh, at 17, he was very, very smart at the uh, University of Florida, mm -hmm. played football. Huh. Is my husband a string bean, you know, it's, yeah. you would never take him for brothers. <laughs> but uh, he was very, very um, brainy. He, was, yeah. he didn't have the looks that my husband had, but he was also very, very sweet. And when his sister was getting married, uh, his, um, he always had Christian friends. They were always afraid of him, you know, that he would marry yeah. out of his faith. But um, anyway, when his sister was getting married, uh, he was one of the groomsmen, so the, he had to look after this family that were coming down from Nashville, you know, to, to this, their wedding, and um, fell in love with the the girl. Huh. Uh, she looked like Merle Oberon when they were married, but she didn't keep her looks very long, but, um, but they, was, they were very wealthy. They were in the scrap metal. Oh, uh. And so when Mitchell, uh, they had no sons, so Mitchell went up there and he ran their business. Okay. Um, Tell us about your children, grandchildren, anything you want to say about your family? Oh yeah, my children, oh dear, um, Cheryl, you know, I mean, I've got a wonderful family, I really do, I can't imagine, when I say to my sister, she just had two girls and she lost one of them, ten, oh. ten years ago she oh. died, oh. she um, was an alcoholic, oh. I didn't know. I, di I didn't know, yeah. but um, anyway, and then she had a fall, and they didn't tell me that to bring the doctor to me, because she was my favorite, because they lived next door to me for yeah. 17 years. Yeah. And, uh, and my Kevin, who's a very religious, religious boy, he married a Catholic girl from Cuba. Oh. So, I mean, you talk about a, a mixed <laughs> family, 
And uh, uh, when my niece, well, my husband's niece was getting married in the temple, she had 10 bridesmaids. Wow. So she had to have 10 groomsmen. <laughs> so Kevin was one of them. And he had, had met this girl. He was going to be a dentist. And he went to Georgia's Te uh, Georgia State. State for the two years. It, our friends in Miami were, were dentists. He told him, he said, you go there first and get rid of the crappy stuff, you know. Yeah. Then you apply for uh, dental school, uh -huh. which is what he did. Uh -huh. But um, at, Emory. at Emory. At Emory, okay. So uh, anyway, um, he'd met this girl, she was his lab partner, and I guess she'd picked him out, you know, because <laughs> he'd never dated, as far as I know. You know, he was a very bookish, he's yeah. handsome, yeah. very handsome. Yeah. He was a bookish boy, you know. So he said, he told us, he said, would we go and pick her up, because that's the only way that the folks would let her come. Oh. Because, you know, she was, they were never le uh, alone. Yeah. They were never alone until okay. they married. And uh, so when I get, get there, I had to explain to them who we were. And she had a full length, a sort of a silver metallic dress, and she had a mouthful of braces. <laughs> and I told her, I said, if your husband fell in love with you with a mouthful of braces, <laughs> I guess, and of course, he's got this same smile as my husband. You know, these because patients, his patients, some of them say that I want teeth like you. So he said, "Well, these are mine." Because <laughs> he's got that same smile they all all, all have, you know. And uh, one of the my grandsons married a girl from Turkey that wow. he met at Georgia Tech when she came over to get her masters. So the only one that married um, a, a, a native of, whoops, is um, my eldest you, you son. Could, you could cross it, I just wanted to get He the, married a, right. an Episcopalian like me. So of course they think we're heretics, you know. <laughs> I said, you check our, our our prayer book, you'd think you were in the Catholic Church, and it's true, <laughs> it's true. And the fellow that married, married them was uh, a Catholic priest. He married them in the Catholic Church, Father Burtonshaw. Huh. And uh, some years later, he comes to our church. He had married, so he left the Catholic Church and had married a widow because he was uh, going to the hospitals. Her husband was dying, and that's where he met us. So anyway, they're coming to my birthday party. <laughs> Father Burtonshaw, he came to when my husband died. He came, and he used to come and bring him flowers he was so sweet yeah. to my husband, and yeah. and uh, he loved my husband loved to come to church with me on a Saturday night, because we at five thirty we have a very low mass, you know it doesn't take any time, and he'd come in if it was cold with his hat on, so I'd say to him I have to take your hat off, so he'd say why. <laughs> You have to keep your hat on in the temple. I said, this isn't the temple, this <laughs> is the church. I'm trying to say it in a, in a low voice, and he's deaf in one ear. <laughs> so Father Burtonshaw used to say to him, Shalom, you see. So one day he's sitting, I went up to take communion, and he's sitting there, and I said, now, I'm going up there, you can see me. You just stay here, you know, you, you'll see I won't be two minutes and blah, blah, blah. I get up there, he's standing behind me. So Father Burtonshaw gave him a wafer. 
<laughs> the old-fashioned priest. They don't make him like that one. So I always had a soft spot for him. Yeah, I can understand yeah, that. I did. And he came when my husband died. He came. He, uh, and he's coming to my birthday party. Good. So we're a mixed-up group, aren't we? Very, very diverse group. Yeah, but we all love each other. That's great. That's so I mean that's what it takes. That's, yeah. that's it. I mean really I do. They send me beautiful cars, flowers. I've got flowers all over everywhere for Mother's Day and I don't really <laughs> like cut flowers. <laughs> You've got to fool with them. <laughs> Just shows how many people love you I guess. I guess so. Yeah, and they do. They do. I, I want to do something. I want to be sure we don't finish before I show your husband's medals and oh, awards yeah. for the military. Yeah. This, this is well, very impressive. Heavy. Isn't it heavy? I'm going to read this because you can't see it yeah, on the that's film. His cruise. Second Lieutenant Malcolm J. Maggot, United States Army Air Corps, 303rd Bomb Group, 358 Squadron, 23 May 1944 to the 2nd of June 1946. See, well, when they, uh, um, he already had his bars for first lieutenant, which he should have got. It yeah. was automatically. But see, his, his crew had gone home. Yeah. So he, he got lost in the shuffle, but he yeah. didn't care. Would you point him out? I'm going to yeah. show this to you, and then we'll point it out on the camera where he is in that picture. There he is. Oh, I recognize the smile. Yeah. <laughs> right there. Okay, thank you. I don't know why that, that frame is so heavy. Well, you've got an amazing story, and I, I want to be sure everybody here has a chance to ask you any questions they have yeah. before we finish, because... Well, I uh, told you, you know, <laughs> I'm such a talker, and then well, things glad. come back, back to me. I know I'm hopping from one generation to the next, but but um, it's how it, it comes to me. Yeah, well that makes it yeah. more interesting to who, anybody that watches this to, yeah. to have also, some. Also they came from um, the war rooms one time oh. to interview me. To, I don't know how they got my name. And when was this? This was some years ago. 2002 sometime. Was it? Okay. Yeah, they came to see uh, how I was uh, accepted when I came. Okay. You know, what was my impression? Were people good to me? What did you tell them? You know, I, I said yes. You know, I wasn't going to give them any of the sad thing because that had been long gone, you know. Yeah. But, um. Well, did you have any problems with people accepting you? Did you have any? No. Not, not off the street. Yeah. In fact, I was sitting in a bus alongside them. You know, and I talk to everybody, you know. It's, so I talked to this girl next, sitting next to me. So she, she, uh, she knew that my accent was uh, strange. So she said, did you have any trouble with the um, English when you came here? <laughs> I said, no, it didn't take me too long. I picked it up. <laughs> <laughs> You come from England and yeah. ask him. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but you see, people don't know, do they? No, they don't. They don't even know where they came from. You're, they you're came so right. From. You're so right. So I've got all the, um, on my mother's side, they were Scots. Their name, they were oh, Spence, okay. was their maiden, my mother's maiden name. And they were, um, uh, what, what's the clan? Macduff. McDuff, okay. Because when I went to Scotland, I got the, um, you know, the kilts Kilt, and, yeah. and the, the whole works. What was your father's profession? My father was, um, what would you call it? He did the... Detailer. Uh, Painting uh, detailer. Detail. He, he painted with these tiny, weeny little... He worked for his company during the war. They made... Um, uh, mm -hmm. what whatever. It was furniture. Yeah, it? but that was. But during the war, they made oh, other things, you know, to do with the war. Okay. But they made beautiful perambulators. You know, 
that the English use and my, husband, my father did all the detail work by hand. I have these tiny little uh, brushes, you know, minute, tiny weeny little, little oh. brushes. And then when he came to Atlanta, he worked for the Biltmore Hotel. Oh, yes, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Worked for the Biltmore Hotel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And my grandmother was a waitress at the so, Biltmore yeah. Hotel. Oh, yeah, they gosh. could walk, they walk, walk there. Yeah, they they had a much sense. easier life when they came here. Yes. And uh, Where did they live? What part of town? When they first came, on Juniper, Juniper Street, yeah. Juniper, yeah. Tenth Street, but she, okay. they lived with us for a year yeah. in the apartment with Joan and Bob when they came down okay. from New York, and we all lived there. It was a three bedroom, and I got pregnant, and my mother, you know, I blew up like a balloon. <laughs> My doctor wanted to put some weight on me, you know, and my mother said she almost killed me. I had nine, and a half, nine pounds eleven, she was, and this was a girl that had no hips. <laughs> so she said, <laughs> and she was a breach. <laughs> and my doctor said it frightened him. He didn't realize that she, that she was as big as she was, because they didn't have back then he didn't have the things that they have today yeah, to yeah, tell you. Yeah. And he tried to turn her, oh. you know, to, with my stomach. And she'd get a certain way and then she'd go right back to the <laughs> way she was, you know. But um, So they didn't have those things that they have on call, the midwife? Yeah, you watch that? Listen, yeah. That's, that's <laughs> well, they did, they yeah, they should have. either, because that was supposed to be in the 50s. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. They, they should have, very antiquated, you know. In fact, I had an English friend, and um, her daughter was born in England, and then her son was born here, and she said, oh boy, it was like the difference between uh, night and day, you know, the yeah, care that, uh, yeah. that, um, that she had. In fact, this friend of mine, I told you, the one whose clothes I, I wore, she lost her husband. They never found his plane. It was just shot out of the sky. And after seven years, um, for some reason, she went to uh, Australia. She met a guy. She met a fella. Yeah, that's right. She met a fella that was um, going to us, or he may have been Australian or whatever, I don't know. Anyway, so she figured that, well, she'd go and she, she'd see. First of all, she was older, that she was seven years older than me. So she wasn't a young girl, so she had a little moxie, you know. So when she came and got off the plane, she took one look at him and she said, I couldn't marry you. She says to herself, I couldn't marry you if you were the last man. <laughs> but after she'd made the journey, she figured she would stay a year. So she got a job in a hotel. And back then, they had these, Australia was a still, you know, a wild west. Wild, yeah, the wild west. These ranchers would come in once a month. They would come in and uh, I don't know what they came to do, I can't remember, but anyway, they would come in and she would give them their key and when she went, they would throw it back. Huh. She'd pick that up. Yes. Give it to me. She wouldn't, she wouldn't pick it up. <laughs> she made them put it in her hand. <laughs> um, but they loved that, you know, they, uh, but she got homesick and yeah. after a year, she came home and she met her second husband, who was a Jewish boy. And they had, she was 40 when she got pregnant and she had a rough time. They walked her around. She was about three weeks late now, a woman 40 years old. Yeah. She had to walk around. She was three weeks in the hospital, walking up and down, you know, trying to whatever, <laughs> which I guess, Anyway, when she wanted that baby to come. That's right, but he when he came, he had a big head, and um, and uh, he wasn't. He, was, he had to go to special school. Oh, okay. And then and then they went on holiday. Um, 
with her brother and his wife and they were in Germany and uh, on the dance floor and her husband dropped dead. Gee. Oh. So she wasn't going to take him through Munich. She didn't, I'm not going to have them spit on his coffin, you know. So she called her friend, who was a Jewish man, and they, they got him cremated. And, uh, and he is buried in uh, the Rothschilds. He's buried in the Rothschild. That's how he, it was easier for him, the, them to get him home, uh, having him cremated than to yeah. get the body, you know. And he was buried in um, that. So, where the are. yeah. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you know, she she had a, but she had a long life. Didn't she? She was in her, the last time I saw her, and she'd gotten a little fuzzy, yeah, yes. and she kept thinking her husband was still alive. Oh, gosh. She'd say to somebody, uh, Frank will be here any minute now, you know, you and but see, she was yeah. a smart woman. She worked for the government, and... Um, was there anything else you would like to say? To summarize or to... I don't this, think so. I can't think. What should I say, Chell? Don't feel like you have I to say something, it, but I just yeah. want to be sure oh, yeah. that well, we get everything you want to say. Start me off again and I... <laughs> no, don't start no, me. I don't want... No, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> oh, we could listen forever. Yeah. We know you have things to do. But my father um, died. He... Um, I told you he worked in the with paint, yeah, and uh, they had the uh, visiting people to, to take uh, x-rays, mm -hmm. and they found that there was a problem with his lungs. He had a, something in his lungs, and they said if they'd have got it six months earlier, they could have removed part of the lung, huh. but um, it was too late. But his father also died of a, they, they were heavy smokers back then. And working around with, with the paint and, and whatever, but he, um, he got so thin, he couldn't eat. He couldn't drink. My mother would give him something to drink and it would go all the way through him, you know. And she called my sister and I one morning and she said, if you want to see, say goodbye to your daddy, she said, you better get here now. So we drove down there, then we were in school, and Roma was in school, but Jonathan and uh, Avis were little ones, they came with us. And my mother pulled back the covers, he was skin and bone, there was no flesh on him at all. It was awful. I wish she hadn't have done that, that because that took a long time for me to get that out of my mind. But um, uh, he never complained. You see, he was grumpy, but then he was a grumpy man anyway. So they never knew that he was in the pain. You know, whereas if they could have done it six months earlier, like they said, because his brother, they did that. And he lived 20 years late wow. afterwards. After the, what, they removed one part of the lung yeah. or w whatever they did. But, um, but see, it, my father never complained about anything. He, he, he was just that kind of a, of a man. And uh, you couldn't say that about my husband because he complained about everything. <laughs> Well, I know one thing you didn't complain about is you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, the, but I tried to keep him home, and I did keep him home for a long time. Yeah. But I, at the end, I couldn't. I couldn't yeah. do it. And he would. He wouldn't know who I was. Yeah. He'd say, "Who's sleeping in that bed?" Because he got where well, our bedroom, for one reason or other. Uh, didn't agree with him. There was some. I'd wake up in the night and he'd be gone. He'd be in the guest room in the in the top of the covers, you know. 
So I said, look, if you're going to be there, I might as well come and sleep in the other bed because I wouldn't hear you. Mm. You know, if I was in one side of the house and he was, he was at the other, and, um, and I would hear me, he'd get up in the night and he would be talking into the toilet. There's somebody down there and then there's someone behind the walls and, oh dear. Well, he was lucky to have somebody like you who loved well, him so much. See, and he, like he your whole family. Bawling. And so I couldn't, I, yeah. I knew I had well, to, to put something, I, could, I couldn't do it, couldn't pick him up. Yeah. Well, y'all had a real love story, obviously. Yeah. Good, yeah, long marriage. Yeah. And, yeah. You're, and, uh, and, 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 I, and I then he would say, who's that woman? Who was that woman in that bed last night? I said, that was me. That wasn't you, he said. <laughs> I said, well, I don't know who else it would be. <laughs> <laughs> you hope so. <laughs> but well, see, he would fall, and uh, sometimes he'd, he'd c crawl on his hands and knees to get back in his bed, and I was always afraid. It's a wonder I, I couldn't close my eyes, you know, because I was always afraid uh -huh. he's going to fall out of... But I had to put him in the thing, and I hated to do it, because he wanted to come home. Let's go home, he'd say. Let's go home. In fact, the night before he died, he wanted to come home. Mm -hmm. Let, let's go home, but you did say. The right thing. But I, I couldn't. Um, mm. Well, you were both fortunate to have each other. Well, that you and loved took each all other. Those years, took care of each I other. Mean, and you can't. How many years were you married? Sixty-eight. It Sixty would have been yeah. the next month. Sixty-eight years. So, you know. A long time. Well, your story is an inspiration to us. I mean, yeah. it, it, oh, <laughs> it's, it's, he must be giving you the yeah. sign. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it really is an inspiration to all of us. I mean, you, your marriage and your life and what you yeah. went through and all the happy times. And, and I, again, as I mentioned before, this is unusual for us because we're usually interviewing the veteran, and it's it's special for us to be able to hear about a veteran's wife's story and particularly the fact that y'all met over in England during That's the war. Right. And yeah. I just want to thank you so much for coming in well, today and telling us your welcome. story. Thank you. I'm sure. <laughs>